hello students welcome to engineers academy do hit the subscribe button if you are here for the first time now we are going to solve these two problem and the first one problem says that two cables are tied together at c and loaded as shown knowing that p equals to 360 newton determine the tension in cable ac and in cable bc so uh, here we have two cables which are tied to this point c and we have this force p and this q force this p force has a magnitude of 360 newton for this particular problem we are required to find the tension in these two uh, cables so first of all we need to draw the free body diagram so i have cut this section from this diagram and we will be able to show the tension in this bc rope so here we will have the tension in this bc rope and here we will have the tension in that AC rope. So let me represent all those tensions. So this is the tension in rope AC. This is TAC. And similarly, we will have the tension in rope BC. So this is the tension in rope BC. So we can say that this is T b c now since this this point c is in equilibrium and we have four number of forces we need to resolve all these three forces and we know if this point c is in equilibrium the sum of all the forces in the x will be equals to zero and the sum of all the forces are components in the y must be equals to zero so now i'm going to resolve this p force so this p force will have one component in this direction and it will have one component in this direction and remember that this is our this is our positive x direction and this is our positive y direction so the orange arrows tells us the uh, defines our coordinate system so the this is our positive x and this is our positive y now if we resolve this force P into its components, we will have one of its components in the positive X and we will have one of its component in the positive Y direction. So as we know that uh, this, this component will be the cos component, we are given the angle in terms of this right angle triangle. And if we, if we talk about this angle of P, so this will be, this component will be P cos of theta. If this is some angle theta, and we can find cos of theta by using this triangle so cos of theta will be base divided by the hypotenuse so we need to find the hypotenuse using these two so the hypotenuse of these two will be equal to let's say that is the hypotenuse so that will be by using the pythagoras theorem this will be four square plus three square under the square root and this will give us 25 and that will be five so the hypotenuse of that triangle is five we can write that this is five so now if if this component is the cos component we can say that this is p and cos of theta will be the the base and the hypotenuse if we are considering this angle theta so p cos of theta is 4 divided by 5 similarly this component will be the sine component and this will be p sine of theta and sine of theta from this triangle will be the perpendicular divided by hypotenuse so this will be p into 3 divided by 5 similarly we need to resolve this uh, TAC into its components and the angle of this TAC is given in shape of these two dimensions so we can uh, develop such right angle triangle for TAC as well so let me draw that triangle here so we will have that right angle triangle like this So this will be our right angle triangle and this height is 250 mm and this base is 600 mm. We need to find the hypotenuse again using the Pythagoras theorem. So now the hypotenuse is let's say small h. So that will be 250 square plus 600 square under the square root and this gives us uh, 250 square plus 600 square so this gives us 650 so the hypotenuse is 650 mm now 
as we know that if we resolve this TAC into its components, we will have one component in this direction and we will have one component in this direction. So this component, the horizontal component is the cost component since we are considering this particular angle. And if we are considering this particular angle, we need to consider that angle here in this right angle triangle. So we are going to consider this angle. So this will be, this horizontal component will be TAC cos of theta. So that will be TAC cos of theta and cos of theta from this triangle will be the will be the base divided by hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse is 650. So the base is uh, 600 and the hypotenuse is 650. Similarly, we will have the Y component in this direction and it will be the sine component. This will be TAC and sine of theta from this triangle will be the perpendicular divided by hypotenuse. Now this will be the perpendicular is 250 and the hypotenuse is 650. And there is no need to resolve this Q force and TBC since they are acting in the positive Y and negative Y direction. So now we need to find the, the sum of all the components along the X. That must be equal to zero since this point C is in equilibrium. So now we have this P into four divided by five, five component in the positive X. Towards the right is our positive direction. So we will write P into 4 divided by 5 this is in the positive direction we have this particular component in the negative x so we will write minus tac 600 divided by 650 and this is equal to 0 so only these two components are in the horizontal direction in the positive x and in the negative x direction so now from this equation we can write that minus TAC 600 divided by 650 equals to if we bring this term to the other side of the equation it will become negative so we will write minus P into 4 divided by 5 and multiplying both sides of the equation with minus 1 we will have plus so now we can write that TAC is equal to P into 4 divided by 5 and we need to cross multiply this so that will be 650 divided by 600 so TAC in terms of P is 4 multiplied by 650 divided by 5 multiplied by 600 so this is we can say that this is 13 divided by 15 P let's say this is equation 1 this is the generic equation in terms of P and if you want to find the TAC value for the first problem, P value is given. So we need to substitute that P value here and we will be able to find TAC. So let's find TAC. So TAC is equals to 13 divided by 15 and P value is 360 Newton. So now we need to multiply this answer with 360. So this is 312 TAC is equal to 312 Newton so the tension in AC cable when P is equal to 360 Newton is 312 similarly uh, we need to add up all the Y components so the summation of forces in the Y direction this must be that must be equals to 0 and in the upward direction is our positive Y direction now we have this P component this is uh, in the positive y so you will write plus p into 3 divided by 5 then similarly we have this uh, this component in the positive y so you will write plus tac into 250 divided by 650 and then we have this tbc in the positive y as well so you will write plus tbc and we have this Q force in the negative y. So that is minus 480. So minus 480 this is equal to 0. So now we know TAC in terms of P. I need to substitute uh, this TAC in terms of P. So we will have the equation in two unknowns. So this is P into 3 divided by 5 plus TAC is 13 divided by 15 P into 250 
divided by 650 plus TBC minus 480 equals to 0. Now we can take P common from both of these terms. So we will have P 3 divided by 15 plus uh, sorry, this is uh, 3 divided by 5. So 13 divided by 15 into 250 divided by 650 plus TBC minus 480 equals to 0. So now let's, simpl sim let's simplify this. So 3 divided by 5 plus 13 divided by 15 into 250 divided by 650. So this gives us 14 divided by 15. So this is 14 divided by 15 P plus TBC minus 480. Now we want to find TBC. So TBC is equals to 480 minus 14 divided by 15 P. This is equation number 2. Now we are given P value and problem 251 P is 360 Newton. So now I need to substitute that P value in here. So 480 minus 14 divided by 15 360. So this is 480 minus 14 divided by 15 into 360. So this gives me 144 Newton. TBC equals to 144 Newton. So the solution to the first problem is TAC is 312 Newton and TBC is 144 Newton. Now in the next problem we are required to find, it is said that two cables are tried together at C and loaded as shown. Determine the range of values of P for which both cables remain taut. So now we want to find the range of P values for which this T, the AC rope and this BC rope, they remain taut. So this means that uh, if these ropes uh, need to be taut, the tension in both the rope must not be equals to zero. So we can say that for problem for 252, TAC must not be equals to zero and TBC must not be equals to zero. They must be greater than zero. So now we have two equations. This is equation number one and we have equation number two. Now this TAC, if I write that equation number one, which is TAC equals to 13 divided by 15 P. This must not be equals to zero. This must be greater than zero. So 13 divided by 15 P equals to zero. And if, if we multiply both sides of the inequality by 15 divided by 13, So this will cancel out and we will have P greater than zero. So this is the first condition. So P must be greater than zero if you want to have those two uh, cables in taut position. So then we have equation number two. So then for equation number two, TBC is equal to 480 minus 14 divided by 15 P. This must be greater than equals to zero as well. Uh, this must be greater than zero as well since we want to have some tension in BC rope as well. So now if this is the case, we can write that 480 minus 14 divided by 15 P is greater than zero. We need to subtract 480 from both sides of equation from, from both sides of the inequality. So we will have minus 14 divided by 15 P and this will be minus 480. And now if I multiply both sides of equation by minus 1. So we will have 14 
divided by 15 p and the n equality sign will change we will have this less than 480 and now if i multiply both sides of equation with 15 divided by 14 we will have p less than 480 multiplied by 15 divided by 14 so this is 514.29 newton so now if you want to have some tension in both the cables in order to keep them taut the p value must be greater than zero and it must be less than uh, 514.29 so we can say that p must be greater than zero and it must be less than 514.29 newton for the given condition so this is the range of p values p must be greater than zero and less than 514.29 newton so this is the solution of these two problems i hope this will help you in your learning let me know in the comments if this helps in your learning do subscribe engineers academy for the solution of such more problems from vector mechanics for engineers by bear and johnston